This is just a short tip on um, using some clipping masks. Um, there's different ways of using masks in Affinity, which I simply love. This one I use quite often, and it's a nice tool. It's kind of non-destructive in when you're editing uh, specific images with masks. The key here is, is if I want to isolate each of these individual elements, which happens to be our faces here, and place them at the bottom or wherever, treat them as independent objects as we're using. Now you could go and you could go and create a lips around you and cut that out and paste it here, but then that's a destructive form of editing. Whereas in this case, I could basically go and still choose what I want to have visual um, visible in that area. But let me show you how I do this, and it can be used for a lot of other features. So I'd consider this a kind of non-destructive way of creating masks from a single image that you're working with. Okay, so this is kind of the end result we're looking at. Okay, I'm going to delete everything first of all, so I can start with a blank slate. Uh, let me place this image here. And I don't think I'll have any copyright issues because this happens to be my family. Um, so I'm going to go image here and I'm going to just call this family and then I'm going to choose a shape um, keep it simple um, I can press the shift button to constrain it and there's our first sample now if I click off this then everything disappears I have no idea where it is and I've got to go try and second guess so a good idea is just to give it a, a color um, outline and in this case I've got it as one point thickness and it's blue so now I know where I'm working to I can visually see what's going on however if you do give it a color here when you finish doing what I'm going to show you now creating the clipping mask it will have a color border which you can use to your advantage of creating a actual color make it more thick or change colors or you can just make it transparent um, and it will disappear so it has that flexibility so here is the key at the moment, this family image could be on top, it could be at the bottom, it doesn't matter. Um, what you've just got to identify is that the image um, has to go into the actual shape. So you can either take it from here and push it on the side where you see that blue line, um, or you could drop it right to the bottom where it's equal to how it is now currently right on top. So it's right on top or right at the bottom. But the one we want to get to and I'm still holding my left mouse button down, is to drag it below the current word there, ellipse. So it's below the box of ellipse, but towards the right-hand side, you'll see it's a restrained blue line that comes up. And that will create a clipping mask. Let me show you. I'm going to drag it slowly up there. And can you see there? It gets a shorter line. And if you look at the screen, you'll see the effect there. Once again, I love Affinity for the real-time feedback so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to let go of my mouse button. And that's it. I've created a nice, beautiful clipping mask. But it's non-destructive. Why do I say it's non-destructive? Before I go and show you how, I'm going to just name this. Let's just call that Jesse. The reason I'm saying non-destructive because if you click this little arrow here, you'll see it shows you that's where the ellipse is and that's where the image is that's in the ellipse. So if I want to move this image, I select it and I can move it around until I'm happy. I can size it. I can do whatever I want to with it. Once I'm happy, then I am basically just click on top and then I have that there. So if I move here, just be careful that you grab the top ellipse area when you are busy moving. Uh, because sometimes you might be selecting onto this area and you want to move and then you accidentally move the area at the back and everything if you're duplicating this object you'll be duplicating the image rather than the entire object so make sure you select it on the the actual ellipse or the the clipping mask area i'm going to create a copy of this now and so usually you can bring in another photo do exactly the same with another part of the image and then repeat it that way but there's a quicker way improving your workflow as usual um, you can now make sure you're on the ellipse press control and left mouse button and drag okay and if you want to constrain it you can press the shift button and it will just keep it nicely constrained okay i let go and there we have it 
So now we've created a, a copy of it, and I'm going to just name this. Uh, let's call this Zoe. That's the other daughter. And how do I get her image to move? Remember what we said earlier? We can pop it down. It's non-destructive. Grab the image, drag it across. And you get the idea. Click off there, and there we have it. Go back onto Zoe, and I'm going to now control, drag out a new one. And I'll, I'll just name that, um, let me say that's Lisa. And I'll just do another one and say that's Rory. Okay. And let's go and move the faces around there. So basically, you could have started off and done that with every one of Jesse and then rename them and then go shift the photos afterwards. So now I've done these three, but this one I'm going to go change. So I go to Liesl, I go to Family, and I move the object to where she is. I'm going to edit the image a bit so she fits in a bit better there. Okay, I'm not too worried about hands around here because that's not p part of the um, sort of show and tell that I'm getting to. It's just to do the actual clipping mask. Then I can go to this one, and I want to make Rory appear there. I'll go to Family move him into that space, maybe make it a bit sized. And there we pretty much have it. So I can now move Zoe, Jesse, Liesl over there. And we select them all if we want to align them. Go to the Arrange Tools. And remember we are taking the ellipses of this. Just make sure that you're not grabbing the family images below them because then the image will be affected. So the best way to do that is to basically click into the screen where you're working and now you only have these and make a left mouse drag over, full selection. So we're going to go there and I'm going to align them all straight and I want equal spacing. So it's doing it nicely and I'll click OK. If you want to know how to use these align tools, there are some tutorials and I think I've done one or two that uses that and explains it. So if I want to size these now, I'll grab here and it will go unproportionate in whichever way or I could constrain them by pressing shift and keeping them in alignment there. Okay, now as when I started, I had a picture here of the background. So instead of going and getting the image and placing it, we have copies of them here already. So I can go to any one of these and just go onto the, the actual image below, press Control C and then click off here, press Control V and paste that image. And that's pretty much it. Um, there we have a, a image and these ones we've been able to pull out of that area. Remember that I said if we wanted to change the color around the edges, we can select that, make sure we're on the outline, uh, go to green for example, and we'd be able to see that change to green. That one, show you on the outline, and we can change that one to orange and so forth. Of course, if we wanted to increase the thickness, we could make it a bit thicker. That now becomes just a normal object you're working with. If you want to remove all of these, we can do them together. Keep shift down and we select them all. Go to the outline and say make it transparent and we're pretty much at that point. And then each of these objects can be edited with adjustment layers and layer effects and everything. Okay, so we have all of these together and that's how we do it. So hopefully that has been of help and as per usual, share it with people, help them to shorten their uh, workflow time and have a fantastic day and God bless.